What's up guys? I'm back and today we're going to celebrate Scarlett's first year anniversary with me. Let's go guys! So it's been a year of ownership with Scarlett and it's, uh, well, I took delivery of her last October 24 and uh, I uploaded my first video, the delivery video of uh, my MX-5 at around November. So today I'm going to share with you my one year video. I'm going to share with you what I've done with Scarlett so far and what mods are worth doing again and what mods are, you know, pretty much like just don't do it because it's not really worth it. I remember when I first got Scarlet and I still recall the jubilation and the happiness I felt when I took delivery of her. You could see it in my face when I took her for a drive, the first drive in the dealership. By the way, I don't know if, every, if any one of you knows, but the real reason why I took her for a drive around the dealership uh, area was I needed to check if I could still drive a manual transmission after like what, 10 years of driving automatics. And uh, thankfully I still got to drive her and it's been a year and in that year uh, I've taken Scarlett for many drives I've taken her up north in the in Clark in Baguio I've taken her down south we went to Batangas we went to Tagaytay went to so many places Laguna and all that stuff now there was also a video wherein I uh, asked uh, my viewers you guys if it's if I should keep her stock or if I should modify her. And uh, as you know from all my videos, uh I decided going to the modification route. What I've done was for the first year, I modified just a few bits that I felt would enhance her appearance and her performance. I didn't really do anything radical or drastic with her because as a stock MX-5 Scarlet is already quite perfect out of the box. Of course, we already now have the 2019 models with uh, 26 more horsepower and uh, the telescoping steering wheel. But in, with all honesty, I don't really find the need to upgrade yet, especially since just a year old. Anyway, I don't, I, I don't find the, her power lacking. I've taken her to the track a couple of times already, and you know, for my driving skill level, I feel that her power is just adequate. Okay, so right now I'm going to share with you guys the things that I've done with her, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to share with you what I feel are the right mods to do. Uh, which th the things I've done and uh, these mods would either enhance or protect or improve on Scarlett's already perfect form. Let's begin. One of the first things I did which I didn't show in the video was uh, just a few weeks after taking delivery of Scarlett, I had her ceramic coated. Now I, uh, I was debating my with myself, well, should I go uh, paint protection film, the clear film, or should I go ceramic coating or should I just not do anything. Uh, in the end, I decided to do ceramic coating and I went with uh, Superb Auto Tech Services. They're a detailing company here in, uh, in the Philippines uh, based in Las Piñas. And what they did is they applied G-Technique uh, clear uh, ceramic coat on my Scarlet. Uh, that's, a, that's a mod that I would do again and again. Why? Because, well, ceramic coating isn't as expensive as PPF and it also protects uh, the paint from swirl marks and makes it more hydrophobic making it easier for me to clean now the ceramic coat that I put on Scarlet should last for around uh, four to five years depending on my use and given that Scarlet is not a daily driver I would expect to like reach as up to five years another plus there is I don't need to wax her anymore I don't need to put on paint sealant because there's ceramic coat acts as a sealant already. Now why didn't I go for PPF? Well PPF is first of all very expensive. I find it too expensive for a mod that you know you can't really see and just protects the paint. And another thing is I live here in the Philippines and any rock chips that uh, Scarlett would have and she already has a couple of rock chips right here. Any rock chips that, that she would have I could easily just have her resprayed with Sol Red and and since I'm here in the Philippines, labor costs for painting, repainting the bumper is very, very low. 
The next modification I did during her first year was to install this Fujimura Gentle Sound Exhaust uh, Axle Back Muffler. Now, uh, when I was driving Scarlett, I felt that she was too quiet for a sports car and being so low to the ground and so small, driving in the noisy streets of Manila, it would be very difficult to see Scarlett even if she's in her color red, if she is too quiet. Now, when I installed this muffler, cars, pedestrians, everyone can hear me at least a block away when I'm coming in. And they, they would stop and they would look and they would always avoid Scarlet. Now, another another good thing about the muffler is that it freed up some of the exhaust flow and that added a little bit of horsepower or performance uh, gains to Scarlet. Not, not that much because I don't have a tune yet. I don't want to blow up my warranty just being a year old. It gave her a really nice, bassy, aggressive sound. Now, would I do the same mod again? Definitely, but there is a caveat there. You know, whenever I drive her on the highway, there is a little bit of that muffler drone, especially when I'm at the around 4,000, 5,000 RPM range. And uh, honestly, even with uh, even knowing that it's gonna be that noisy, uh, it could sometimes get to me. And if ever I'm gonna do it again, maybe I'll go for a muffler that's a little bit quieter, just a little bit. She has no drone though when she's idling, just standing by and idling, as you can see now. So yep, I love the sound, uh, I, love the, I love the tone, but if I could just remove the drone at highway speeds, then it would have been perfect. But otherwise, still a good mod guys. Next, I have here my carbon fiber ducktail spoiler. As you all know, I had this fabricated here locally. Uh, it would be cheaper to do that, and it has, with, it has stood up the test of time. Over a year of use, and she's still shiny. There are no uh, imperfections on the carbon fiber uh, ducktail. Will I do this mod again? Definitely, I do feel that it differentiates her from all the solar red MX-5s out there on the road. It's easy to see that it is Scarlet because of this carbon fiber ducktail spoiler. Not to mention the Scarlet uh, custom plate that I have at the back. By the way, Another mod that didn't make it into video is this stubby antenna right here. So that's, in fact, this would probably be the first modification I did, which I, I did even before I did my ceramic coat. Why? Because before, even before I took delivery of Scarlet, I already had this delivered from Amazon and I ordered this a month before I picked up the car. So yes, the stubby probably counts as my very first mod. Should I do it again? Definitely, yeah. It gives a better look to Scarlet. I really don't like that RC car type of antenna. And the stubby gives her a cleaner look. The next modification I'm going to share with you now is the first major modification I've done with Scarlet, which is the set of Cusco Street Zero A coilovers. As you can see here, Scarlet's stance is significantly lower than a stock Miata. The stock Miata has really wide, big, large fender gaps but now uh, the, fe the fender gap has been um, noticeably minimized now why didn't I just slam her to the ground being completely adjustable in terms of damping and height uh, I didn't do that because my parking garage ramp is quite steep and if I slam her to the ground then I'll have a nice looking Miata with a bum front bumper Will I do that modification again, the coilovers, the Costco Street Zero A coilovers? Well, let's put it this way, yes and no. All right, why yes? Yes, because the coilovers improved her handling, improved her acceleration, improved her braking. Scarlet is nimbler on the road, much easier to control on the track, and really, really nice to drive. Unfortunately, with the coilovers came a huge disadvantage and that is a sacrifice of ride quality. Even if I set her on the softest setting which she is always on, there is still that noticeable bumpiness of the ride. It's a minor drawback that you will have to sacrifice when you install any coilover, not just Costco's. Any type of coilovers will definitely stiffen up and harshen your ride because of the shorter uh, movement of the struts. Will I do it again? Mm, 
Yes, I still do it again because I've already taken her on a 500 kilometer road trip and although the ride was a little bit jarring, it's not enough for me to have a, an aching body at the end of the trip. So as long as you, you know, keep fit, relatively young, and you like to track your car or drive her in a spirited basis, definitely getting coilovers is a must have for your MX-5. But if you're the type who just likes to cruise down the boulevard and you're the type who just, you know, just want to go out for a nice top-down ride in the sunset, don't really mind driving hard or driving fast, just want to do a leisurely drive where everybody can see how wonderfully handsome or beautiful you are then maybe coilovers may not be the best option. Now, if you want to lower your car, but don't want the harsh ride, a set of nice quality lowering springs and maybe sport shocks would be a much better option. But coilovers definitely give a much, a much harsher ride. Another mod that I did is to add an OEM rear view camera. It's right here tucked near the plate. As you can see, it's not exposed like the like the North American, the 2019 versions in North America and probably other markets as well. Here, this is a better, better placement in my opinion. And is it worth it? Yes, definitely. Because, uh, you know, backing up a convertible with the top up, it's at night. It could be quite a challenge, especially since uh, our roads here in Manila are narrow. And uh, you know, when it, when it rains and it rains heavily here, that added security and visibility definitely makes this a worthwhile modification. Now, some of you guys there might say that you don't really need a camera for a convertible, a small convertible like a Miata. Well, that's on you guys. But for me, since it's accessible, it's available, I got it for Scarlett. One of my interior modifications that I did is to add this set of Carbon Miata quilted uh, floor mats. As you can see, it's wrap around. I also have a video for this. And it's one of the best mods that I did for Scarlet. Why? Because it added a touch of class in the interior of the Miata. And at the same time, it holds up very, very well, extremely well. They still look as good as new as when I got them like maybe 10 months ago. With just proper care, they look brand new. Now, I also added this um, red um, 3M uh, rubber mat here because it, as, as much as uh, it's nice to have to see all the quilted floor mats out there once you put your foot in your shoe in it leaves a footprint and I'm kind of anal when it comes to that I don't really like seeing dirt inside my car that's why I decided to just cover it up with this 3M floor mats so should I do the carbon miata quilted floor mats again Definitely 100% yes. It's one of the best interior mods I've done for Scarlett so far in the year that I've owned her. One of the modifications that didn't make it to video was my addition of this uh, power cord charger, which extended all the way down to where you could uh, plug it into the 12 volt charger. This is one of my indispensable mods because it allows me to charge all, all types of devices uh, with these three extension cords and uh, even without, without having to reach way under into the passenger footwell whenever I want to do a charge. If you notice, Scarlett is now back on her propping rod for the hood. That's because the installation I did for the hood struts on my first few months of owning Scarlett, you know, it, it broke, okay? It's a made in China, it's not really a good uh, product. I installed it properly, it, was, it worked for a little while and then when I took her on my first track day in Batangas Racing Circuit back in March, you know, she just uh, probably because of the chassis flex and all that, one of the hood struts, the metal itself, tore off just tore off guys so uh, it's um, one of the worst sixty dollars that I spent so she's back on her hood prop her manual hood prop so yeah definitely that hood strut not a worthy upgrade I don't think uh, I'll ever do that mod again so there's a lot of other better places where you can spend your money as you can see here guys I have here 
another mod that I did for uh, for the suspension, and that's a Cusco front strut bar. Uh, the reason why I added this was because Scarlett did not come with a stock strut bar. In fact, this improved her uh, chassis rigidity and should help me reduce chassis flex whenever I take her on track days. It also adds a nice bit of under the hood bling for Scarlett. So will I do this mod again? Definitely, you know, for the price, it's not, not a bad deal. So yeah. I'm going to put another front strut bar if ever I need to put a strut bar on Scarlett. Another modification that didn't make it to video is that red MX-5 oil cap. You see that oil cap was also purchased along with the stubby uh, a month before I took delivery of Scarlett. Got it from uh, Amazon in the US and Personally, I think it had it added two horsepower to Scarlett when I changed the stock black plastic oil cap with this Belay aluminum red MX-5 oil cap. So there you have it guys. In just one year with Scarlett, I've taken her to quite a few places. I've added a lot of modifications to her, uh, which I've documented here on my channel. And uh, there are just a few that I didn't also include in the videos, but it's also there. What's in store for Scarlett moving on after this first year? Well, definitely there's gonna be more modifications. I want to continuously improve and enhance Scarlett. The path that I've taken is it's a classy modification route wherein I improve on the already perfect form of the MX-5. I'm also going to take her out to more drives and we're just going to just keep chatting guys. And I'm really happy that when I started, when I uploaded my video last year, when I took delivery of Scarlett, I only had like around 60 subscribers in my channel. And now I'm just a little bit under 500 subscribers. Thank you to all those who are who enjoy watching my videos thank you to all those of you guys all over the world who love watching my adventures with Scarlett here in the streets of Manila anyway guys I really hope that you subscribe to my channel and please hit that like button I'm gonna give you more uh, adventures more modifications and more track days to come guys see you next time bye bye